Have scientists now found the real answers to how our solar system was formed in the Kuiper Belt? NASA discovered mysterious objects there. Are these the oldest objects in the solar system? Really the first pieces of the puzzle to finally explain our own existence? The answers to these questions will always bring us closer to understanding the fundamental processes that led to the birth of the planets and the origin of life. And the question remains, what else lies hidden in the unexplored vastness of the Kuiper Belt? Join us on this cosmic journey. NASA discovers mysterious objects in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is one of the last unexplored regions of the solar system. Only one region is even more mysterious, the Oort cloud, which is located around 7.5 trillion to 30 trillion kilometers outside the heliosphere. The Kuiper Belt, around 4.5 billion kilometers wide, was discovered in 1992 by astronomers David J.T. and Jane L. This discovery marked a turning point in our understanding of the entire solar system. JT and Liu used the 2.24M telescope at the Monia Observatory in Hawaii to search for evidence of objects beyond the orbit of Neptune. Their persistence was awarded when they discovered the first true Kuiper Belt object, 15760 1992 QB1. This discovery opened a whole new chapter in astronomy and confirmed the theory that a region full of smaller bodies exists beyond the known planets. Scientists refer to these bodies as KBOs, or Kuiper Belt Objects for short. Since their discovery in the 1990s, scientists have suspected a colorful hodgepodge of objects within this belt, most of which are direct relics of the first moments of the star system's formation. Imagine it like this. In the beginning, there was probably a dense collection of dust and gas, which began to vibrate and then rotated faster and faster until the center of the cloud had heated up and condensed to such an extent that a star was born. After the formation of the star, our sun, the remaining gases and dust began to clump together due to gravity, which led to the formation of planetesimals. These protoplanets later formed into all the large planets we know today. Others formed into moons, and still others remained shapeless lumps that attached themselves to planets as less round satellites, or traveled freely through the solar system as asteroids. All the materials that did not go on to form larger bodies accumulated in regions such as the Kuiper Belt, the Oort Cloud, or in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. These objects have remained largely unchanged for 4.6 billion years. Unlike our Earth, for example, they have not undergone major upheavals and changes. Therefore, KBOs and similar objects offer us unique insights into the chemical composition and physical conditions of the early solar system. More than one trillion objects are spread across the 4.5 billion kilometer width of the Kuiper Belt. The objects in this region range in size from tiny grains of dust, pebbles, and stones the size of a soccer ball to boulders the size of a family home. The Kuiper Belt is probably also home to a number of asteroids and possibly comets, with the Oort Cloud being the actual home of comets. Plus, the Kuiper Belt is home to the dwarf planets, including Pluto. The objects of the Kuiper Belt probably accumulated here immediately after their formation. The regions such as the Kuiper Belt and the Asteroid Belt were probably formed by gravitationally favorable fields, which favored the accumulation of objects in this area. Today, we can be glad that all these objects are reasonably securely bound in the solar system, because if they were flying around wildly, they would all be a potential threat to our planet. There are one trillion objects in the Kuiper Belt alone, another 1.1 million in the Asteroid Belt, and how many objects have accumulated in the Oort Cloud is still pure speculation. However, there are probably trillions more. The other planets could only come to rest in the course of the development of the solar system and form life like our home because these objects were securely bound. While we know quite well how the large planets, such as our own Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, and all the others formed and changed over time, it's still largely unknown how and why the dwarf planets evolved. For almost a century, we only knew about Pluto, and for almost as long included it in our fixed nine major planets of the solar system. Then came the change with the discovery of the Kuiper Belt and the discovery of fascinating objects such as Eris, Makemake, and Homa. This was discovered in 2005 and sparked a debate about the definition of a planet, which ultimately led to Pluto losing its status as the ninth planet. 
Eris is about the same size as Pluto, and remarkably, it is more massive. It orbits the Sun at a distance of about 68 to 97 astronomical units and takes an incredible 557 years to do so. Eris's surface is exceptionally bright, indicating the presence of frozen methane. Makemake -make was discovered in 2005 and is named after the creator god of Easter Island mythology. It's another of the large KBOs at a distance of around 45.8 AU. Makemake -make takes only around 310 years to reach this orbit. The planet is also remarkably bright, which indicates that this object has a largely uniform surface. Haumea was discovered in 2004 and named after the Hawaiian goddess of fertility and childbirth. Earth. This object is particularly known for its unusually fast rotation, taking only about four hours for a complete revolution. The extremely fast rotation makes Haumea look a bit like a rugby ball. Haumea is located around 43 AU from the Sun and takes around 285 years to complete one orbit. What's exciting about this object are the additional two moons, and Haumea is the only known object in the Kuiper Belt with a ring system. In addition to these three largest and best-known dwarf planets, there are many other minor planets in the Kuiper Belt. Sedna, for example, is an enigmatic object whose orbit takes it far beyond the usual boundaries of the Kuiper Belt. Quaar, which is about half the size of Pluto, shows signs of cryovolcanic activity, which researchers in these remote areas of the solar system did not expect at all. In general, the small and sometimes quite misshapen dwarf and minor planets show such diversity and complexity that scientists suspect that these objects form a world of their own and possibly share an exciting common history. At the moment, we don't know how many more objects there are in the Kuiper Belt it's possible that there are many more small planets. According to experts, there could be 100 or even more. This was one of the reasons why researchers had to draw a line as to which planets are now part of the official planetary system and how many planet names students have to memorize in class. Just adding 10 more objects here was deemed impractical. And so in 2006, the International Assembly of Astronomers and Cosmologists created the category of trans-Neptunian objects or dwarf planets. Pluto did not quite make it into the league of real planets because its orbit is not yet fully cleared, which means that it does not have gravitational dominance in its orbit around the sun. Pluto's orbit is crossed by other objects in the Kuiper belt and it shares its orbit with other objects. Who would have thought that the cradle of life could lie here in the heart of the Kuiper belt? Here we find water that dates back to the origins of our solar system. Many of the objects in the Kuiper Belt are rich in water ice. This ice, trapped in time and space, could contain pre-solar molecules older than the sun itself and provide clues to the chemical processes that led to the formation of water and organic material in the early solar system. So here we have icy time capsules that could be the key to understanding the distribution of water in the solar system. And thus the numerous frozen chunks of ice may be parts of the building blocks for life. By studying the composition and distribution of these icy bodies in the Kuiper Belt, scientists hope to shed light on the earliest sources of water in our cosmic home and perhaps even unravel the mysteries that influence Earth's habitable zone and the possibility of life in the universe. We do not yet know how water and life came to our planet. However, it is striking that asteroids and comets of all things transported the most organic substances. Comets consist of a mixture of dust, ice, and rock. They also clumped together in the early days of the solar system, when our star was still very young and the planets had only just begun to develop. It is still perhaps the greatest mystery of our existence, which mechanisms favor the formation of life and where life organically came from. KBOs from 15760-1992 QB1 to Aroth. Imagine the incredible variety of objects traveling in this broad band at the edge of the solar system. Scientists could probably research here for another thousand years, and they would always find new objects and surprises. And then think about how huge the universe is. The Kuiper Belt, with all its diversity, would not even be a thin thread of hair within the cosmos. It would be nothing. We can only stand in awe and respect before these dimensions and the splendor of the universe. The first discovered Kuiper Belt object, 
15760 1992 QB1 or 15760 Albion is a planetoid with an, with an average diameter of 168 kilometers. At some point in the early days of the solar system, this object could have become a planet or its mass could have combined with other objects. It's still a mystery what processes lead to some chunks merging with others, while those like 15760 Albion spend billions of years orbiting the sun like unfinished small planets. Albion was discovered because it was at its perihelion, its closest position to the sun, in 1992. It's currently moving away from the sun again, and in January 2018, it was 41.3 AU, or 6.178 billion kilometers away from our star. Probably the strangest KBO is Aroth. Initially, this remarkable phenomenon was called Ultima Thule, since NASA's New Horizon mission took a close look at the KBO. The name Aroth, which means sky in the language of the Patan and Alanan Indians, has become established. This so-called binary contact object, which consists of two originally separate bodies that have gently come together, surprised scientists with its flat shape and relatively smooth surface, which contrasts with the expected characteristics of collisions and violent collisions. If Aroth was not formed by collisions, previously unknown processes of matter formation in the early solar system may have led to its unusual shape. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.